In this week's episode, students behind the Fees Must Fall campaign share their new strategy. But first, you can now obtain a tertiary qualification without having to pay a cent. Internet is the miracle worker that's erasing geographical distances. Besides video chatting or instant email replies, connectivity can be exploited even further. Over the last decade, international universities have saturated the web with their coursework and lectures. Now, one Joburg initiative is bringing all that content right to your neighborhood or township with the click of a mouse. It's the Friday morning rush, and Mtoko Zisis Tole is making his way to class. In his mind, he's already going through the study materials of the day. Right now I'm doing a web designing, so it's gonna be certificate. So if I progress correctly and move on to the next level of computer science, that's when I'll get a degree or a diploma. It's nine o'clock, and Mtoko Zisi's class is about to begin. He'll be going through a series of video lectures and tutorials to get him ready for his assignment. Given the resources, the intensity, and the quality of his coursework, Mtoko Zisi should be paying thousands of rands. But what if we told you his tuition costs absolutely nothing? Again, nothing. We've set up a room in the libraries where there's computers and there's desks and it's all nice and comfortable. And uh, you just rock up and you, you, you register. A state-of-the-art facility not at all exclusive to the wealthy. It's built inside the Orange Farm Library near Mtokozis's home. It's a lot of time saver. I don't have to walk kilometers or go far or take transportation or anything. Just have to work. It's like 10, 15 minutes work. This revolutionary educational technology is called the Massive Open Online Varsity. After registration, students can select from a database of courses. The big bonus is that many of them are designed by internationally reputable universities like Harvard and Yale. We've managed to get students through courses in computer science from MIT, um, in finance from Wharton. We've just started some with the Japanese university. But as accessible as web-based learning is, it comes with its own set of obstacles. Not everyone is able to learn without a lecturer's hands-on guidance. Others, eventually in the middle of the program, drop out because of uh, there are there are some assignments or parts where they don't they get lost. They don't understand. So to help students through their work. The program connects them directly to overseas course facilitators. While they primarily mark exams, they are also available to take questions. Because few things beat personal interaction, each center allocates a qualified lecturer. We have assessments, we have people supporting you. We have once a week or twice a week, like lecture sessions where people can ask questions. Completing a degree can take you up to three years. 
but as you study towards graduation, you receive a certificate for each course you finish along the way. This lets you show prospective employers your academic progress and work ethic. We want to produce people maybe not just to go for jobs. Like if you can produce like a few really good people, they themselves will create great concerns and they'll hire thousands and thousands of people themselves. The first of these centres was established by former UNISA lecturer Ray Lesus at the Senton Library in late 2015. His ultimate goal, to deliver the same facilities to underprivileged areas. And with financial support from the city of Johannesburg, Rail and his team have since launched in Soweto, Alexandra and Orange Farm. It is about creating opportunities for development, in particular for our young people. It is about addressing our challenges of unemployment. So the programs that we've developed are focused on ensuring that their link, linkage is directly with enterprise. It's now 1 p.m. and Mtoko Zizis Tole has completed his session for today. He comes in twice a week and plans to finish by March. The whole point of learning to be a web developer is to be my own boss someday. If you would like to visit any of the centers, you can call the number on your screen. Remember, you can also visit our social media pages for more details. After the break. As the war against educational inequality rages on, students demonstrate leadership. Fees must fall. And after they have fallen, then what? There's no doubt that countrywide campus demonstrations brought relief to students who are struggling with university tuition. But there's another persisting problem. How do you even begin to pay for another year of tertiary education when you are facing thousands of rand in debt? For a country where the majority of students come from disadvantaged backgrounds, the tertiary system is not developed enough to meet their needs. Having said that, bursaries and financial aid do play a major role in lowering the cost barrier. Also, elite institutions have come up with ways to make life easier for students. You have the registration system that has been put in place where students don't have to pay their registration fee up front, you know, which is a great step towards, towards ensuring that access to, to institutions of higher learning or access to VITS universities increased. Here begins a more pressing problem. There's no guarantee bursaries will cover all three or four years of study. And for students from poorer households, living expenses become extremely suffocating. I don't make it to second year, third year, and to graduation. Because of financial constraints, because of the conditions I live in, I don't have accommodation. I'm sleeping in a library, I'm squatting with my friends, I'm traveling from far. It slowly became clear students couldn't bear these problems any longer. And in October 2015, the VETS SRC brought the issue to the University Council for discussion. As a first step in relieving financial stress, they pushed for a much lower increase in tuition for the following year. But such a proposal forecasted serious consequences. It would have meant us actually taking a huge impact either on salaries or cutting programs or cutting services, etc. And that would be a real tragedy because it would undermine quality. With both sides presenting valid arguments, an impasse was unavoidable. 
vet students felt they had to make their voices heard by force if necessary. In the days that followed, other campuses nationwide caught on to this contagious anger and impatience. As university officials ran out of options, they called on state intervention. Likewise, the Department of Higher Education had no choice but to take up the costs. In which university, the 0% cost us $171 million. If we took a loss of $171 million, we would have been in a serious trouble. But the state made up $146 million of that and gave us that uh, in, a, in, in, in an increased subsidy. In one week, students achieved what university officials had been pushing for for a decade. But their struggle is far from over. While fees stayed the same for 2016, so too have student debts. And many of them still have no way to finance themselves all the way to graduation. We would need students' outstanding debt to be cleared in order for them to then use the registration plan, in order for them to then be in the system. It's an ambitious goal that cannot be achieved by just taking to the streets. And with this in mind, the VETS SRC came up with an imaginative strategy to fundraise through a multitude of channels. First, they joined forces with like-minded people in the entertainment industry for a benefit concert. It accommodates everybody. Just to pay 100 rand, come through, have fun, and then we take all of the fees to, 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 to paying for students. And back on campus, the atmosphere is no different. Shopping stalls and flea markets have been set up to generate more revenue towards the student fund. Of course, pure donations are also accepted. With corporates having made substantial contributions, the campaign is edging closer to its goal of 10 million rand. Should it be reached, up to 6,000 students stand to benefit. What the university has done is lent, if you like, its offices and machinery, its advancement and fundraising offices and machinery to the campaign. We need such kind of imaginative approaches to addressing the challenges we have. While the Vets University initiative is showing great promise, it can do with your help. Visit our Facebook page and enca.com for more details on how you can contribute. We also have physical addresses and contacts of the massive open online varsity should you wish to register. And this is where we leave it for this week. Join us again next time. My name is Mpola Gaji. Cheers. <laughs>